Hello! Welcome, it's Monday night. It's time for some Monday night sims. Oh, I didn't upload the video last night. Ah, I'll have to upload the video of last night's stream still. Some of you are probably confused. I wasn't feeling too well during last night's stream. I had a bit of a headache, so I cut it a bit short and then went to bed and never uploaded it. Oh no. But, um... Yeah, I was just thinking. Last night seemed... I seem to get to bed very early. What happened? <laughs> it was like, oh yeah, I didn't upload the video. Uh, anyway. Here we go, back to the lovely house. I have to pace myself with my glasses of water tonight because... I don't know, we don't want a repeat of yesterday where I ran out really, really quickly. Oh, it wasn't good. So who's here? Avery Melendez is outside. I don't know who Avery Melendez is. I don't think I care. She can stay out there. Um, right. Bernice, what are you doing? Oh no, she's trying to get in. Everyone, pretend we're not home. Let's turn out all the lights. How do we do that? Um, nobody's home, Avery. No one's in. Alyssa, hello, welcome. You just left Trudeau's broadcast about COVID to join this. Oh, wow. Yeah, for a second, I thought... I When I saw Trudeau, Trudeau I misread it as Theroux and thought Louis Theroux was doing a podcast on COVID, which or a broadcast on COVID, and I think that would probably be really interesting. But I'm sure Trudeau's one's very helpful as well if you live in Canada. <laughs> Lady Smiten, hello. Stormy, hello. Oh, wow. Loads of... Loads of people here. Okay, let's turn all the lights back on. Does having the lights on affect the electricity bill? I don't think it does. I think it's one of those things that people on Facebook groups say happens, but, um... You know, it doesn't actually happen. Oh my god, do you see that lightning? It nearly hit... This person, whoever it is. Antonia Ulette. Oh, it's her again. Oh, I'm working. So, yeah, I've had a kind of nice day. I mean, I was working from home for a lot of today. I had to go in in the morning to pick up my computer to work from home with. But um, it's kind of nice just to have an office in your house so that, you know, when you're getting... You can just order food to the door and you know eat it as you work and stuff it's it's nice and then at the end of the day you don't have far to walk to get home you literally just well in my case i didn't even have to move i was already at my computer but yeah oh, it's, it's it's the life really i mean i wish it was under better circumstances but um yeah it's it's pretty cool Yeah, we are. Well, I think the government recommendation is t to stay home if you at all possibly can, which means that um, basically I'm going to be staying at home um, look, a lot of the time. Hang on a second. Bernice learned to talk some more and I wasn't even trying to do that. She should be doing something else with her time. She should be sleeping, actually. But before she sleeps, let's play a game with her. Let's uh, teach her some shapes. But, um, blah, I forget what I was saying a minute ago about, oh, oh, about, um, staying home. Yeah. So, all the schools and universities and stuff are closed. All the, like, pubs and bars and nightclubs are closed. Um, I think cafes and shops are still open. Um, and your people who can work from home are advised to do it. So, yeah, that's kind of the situation we're in at the moment. Um, so today, yeah, went into work, then on the way home, I had, I had to stop off on the way home at, uh, lunchtime to, um, pick up a birthday present for my girlfriend, but I won't say what it is on stream in case she watches this back on YouTube and finds out what her present is. But, uh, yeah, and then pretty much rest of the day working at home played some Stardew Valley after, and now here I am, streaming away, like some sort of maniac. 
Oh, Leonardo says hi. Well, well say hi to her for me then. Um, are you still living like normal in, in Canada? Wow. Well, one thing I have to say about it is... I... I like this self-isolation stuff. I mean... It's not actually that different from my everyday life anyway. I'm, I'm a very indoorsy kind of person. So... I mean... <sighs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I've been training for this my whole life. <laughs> As a child, my parents constantly told me, Connor, go play outside. You, if you stay indoors, then you'll be unhealthy. And, um... I don't know. You will suffer from health complications later in life. But now, look. I'm, <laughs> I'm staying indoors on my computer to be healthy. Excuse me. No. Do not go to... I'm trying to get someone to read you to sleep, you stupid child. Uh, yeah, sure. You're not. You're not. No. 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 <sighs> Here we go. God, these toddlers. So rebellious. No, where's she going? Why why is he reading over there? No, read her to sleep. To sleep in the bed. Why does this take so many at No. Why are why are you going out here to read? You okay, you look. What are you doing? Picking her up. Okay, read her to sleep then. Read her to sleep. No. No, no, no. What? What the hell? <sighs> you go to sleep then. What? Karina's expecting. How? How did that happen? They. They didn't. Woohoo again. Oh, Lou, hello, welcome. What the hell is going on? <laughs> no, I'm going to have to watch the videos back. You guys, do you remember this? Oh my god. I've never had a Sims accident baby before, but here we go. Oh, she can't use the toilet because in the bath. We don't have room for an accident baby. He's he's just sleeping in the bath. There. Here, use the toilet. Okay, we'll just... Someone has to fix that. Okay. Um, oh no, the cooker's broken as well. Okay, Drizello. I'm sorry, I know you read. Well, yeah, you can pee first, but we've got a lot of repair work to do. And you're the only person even remotely qualified to do it. First the bath, because that noise is really annoying. I don't think they even woohooed, though. Like... I don't know. Did... Is this going to, is this like Scrubs with like, you know, JD and Elizabeth Banks' baby where, I don't know, he got some of his stuff on one of her socks or something and it travelled. That's just, oh, I don't know how this happened. Um, yeah, she's in a good mood. Let's have her repair it. I don't get what the big fuss is with trying to read this child to sleep, though. It's just appear it just seems to be impossible. And now we're going to have another one in the house, and not enough room to put them anywhere. Who knows? They could be even better. Actually, they could be an improved toilet seat. That's how it happened. I mean, no one cleans this toilet seat. There were literally stink lines coming off it yesterday.
Okay, so we're going to have another candidate to be the heir, I guess. There's actually going to be a competition now. So, uh, sorry, Bernice. Guess you're going to have to be on your best behaviour now. If Accident Baby is the best of them all, then Accident Baby gets the house. I'm, like, this could be some sort of sign that we needed a better heir than Bernice, because she's been annoying me a little bit with her, you know, read to sleep thing. How's her skills coming along? Okay, she's nearly potty trained to level one. Oh yeah, she'll be fine. We're going to have to reopen the vet clinic soon to actually earn some money, but I don't feel like it. Who are you? Tanya True. Oh, she's back. Remember her? Wasn't she, um, one of Drizello's potential girlfriends? Look, she's got a golden spoon and a bowl of yogurt just out for a walk for some reason. Kando Kaz. Hello. Welcome. <clears throat> you join us discovering that Karina Lovely is somehow pregnant again and we don't know how. Like, I don't think they woohooed. They... I... I didn't make them as far as I can remember. Could she have gotten pregnant twice last time they tried for baby? Like, you know the way I thought it was twins? What if it was twins, but one of them got stuck, like, halfway down the tube or something, and just the other one being born caused enough rocking about for them to, like, shake loose? No, they'd probably grow in that time, though, wouldn't they? Well, no, they, they wouldn't have implanted yet. I don't know, I'm not a biologist, but that's, that's all I can conclude. Oh, or what if it is the ghost of Garrus? Garrus died yesterday and his spirit must have gone somewhere. We thought it went into the pet cemetery with his grave, but what if it got lost on the way? And now we're going to have like Garrus born into human form. If this child is a boy, we're calling him Garrus and he's taking over from Garrus's like, old role. He's, he's just going to be Garrus as a human. Yeah, if it's a boy, it's Garrus, and if it's a girl, then I don't know. It's not Garrus. I, I mean, we probably won't call them not Garrus. Maybe we will. That's a pretty nice name. Garrus 2.0. That could work. God. The twins have forgotten to go to school. We've got to teach shapes to Bernice once she's done with her breakfast and we're done being attacked by bats. Oh, it's Monty Goth Day tomorrow. Oh, God. He keeps telling me about knowing my scholarships. Why? Why? Why aren't you in school? Russell? God. He's only got six days until he's an adult. They grow up pretty fast. Girlus. Yes! That's it. It's going to be Garrus or Girlus. Okay. 
Okay, let's potty train Bernice. I mean, we're still going to try and build up all her toddler skills and make her like a talented toddler. Just in case we want to keep her on as the heir. Maybe maybe Garrus or Gurlus won't be up to scratch. Maybe they'll be really ugly or something. Because we have to remember that we did say we're basing our inheritance purely on looks. So, you know, we have to, uh, we have to, we have to stick to that. I hope this isn't some sort of glitch where now she's like permanently pregnant and will never age and just, th you know, throw out a baby every few days. That'd be kind of fun, actually. <laughs> An ever-growing Sim family. Until we reach the family limit, then you wouldn't know what could happen. Who's this? Lila Merchant, Emilio Bagel, and Ezra Merchant. Oh, there's a lot of merchants around. It feels like we're almost in Venice. I was meant to be going on holidays to Venice, but... um. Obviously, that's not going to happen now. It's probably the last place to go. It's funny because me and my girlfriend were meant to be going to Venice. And um, then we decided, like, with the coronavirus outbreak and everything and it had reached Italy we were like okay maybe Italy's not the best you know let, let's go somewhere more, more local let's just do a weekend in Belfast and then the next morning there was a coronavirus outbreak in Belfast so um I think we might have jinxed all these places um Jack stole a poster in school oh no um Okay, Russell's in a good enough mood. I think he's got to hang out with his girlfriend a bit. Because we want him to be ready to get married quite soon. Where is she? There she is. Shanna. Let's have her over. Well, I remember um, telling my parents that we were changing our plans from Venice to Belfast. And they were just joking that, you know... Going to Belfast because it's safer than Italy is really sort of something that's new to our generation. <laughs> it's not something you would have heard 20 years ago. Oh, there she is. Let's invite... No, let's cloud gaze. Build up that friend shop. Friend... Friend shop? Friendship. Look at that, her hair has gone right into the pavement. It's wet cement. <laughs> if it's gonna harden, she won't be able to get up. Nintendo's in on it. I think it, they are. Yeah, Animal Crossing out this weekend. And Doom Eternal is out as well. And I, I don't know. I'm not that into Doom Eternal. I'm surprised at how many people are though. I mean... I, I only looked at the trailer of it this week and it did actually, it did look kind of fun. But um, I noticed on Steam that like all of my friends have it on their wish list. I was like, wow. Well, I say all of them, probably like 10 or 12 of them. I didn't know Doom was as big a thing among uh, people. Like I knew it was famous. I know the original Doom was, but I don't know. You're not going to buy Animal Crossing until you finish Pokemon. That's a good idea. I mean, well, a handy thing with Animal Crossing, though, is that you c there's kind of not really enough gameplay to fill an entire day in it. Because, um... What was I saying? Yeah, because, like, because the game plays out in real time... And every real animal, every real world day is an Animal Crossing day. Um, it kind, you know, there's, you can go in, you kind of lot, start it up for a day. You go do your daily stuff. You know, you visit your neighbours, you water your plants, you um, go fishing for a bit. 
you do all these activities, take part in any festivals or anything that are on, and then you can kind of put it down until tomorrow. And then it's, it's a real sort of slow burn of a game. So you can kind of do it concurrently with other games, which I kind of like about it. So I'm going to be like, I'll probably still be playing Stardew Valley in between. I'll be like living my fast paced farmer life on Stardew Valley and my sort of slow, relaxed, tropical island life in Animal Crossing. <laughs> Did it say these guys are good friends? That's perfect. We still don't know what her traits are. Let's find out. They seemed really super compatible. So, um, maybe we should... I'll, I'll be interested in knowing what kind of uh, person she is. Let's get to know her twice. Sims 4 released an isolation pack. Oh, releases. Okay. God, I was thinking that would be kind of poor taste if they had released one. <laughs> She's an active perfectionist. Okay, and he is insane, isn't he? Well, erratic as they call it. He's an erratic geek. Okay, so she's like the jock and he's the geek. It's Romeo and Juliet of our time. Um, yeah, I think they'll they'll do well together. Let's go share a conspiracy theory with her. That's the ultimate test. Llamas don't really exist. They're just astronauts covered in fur after being exposed to gamma rays on the moon. Oh, she believed him. Okay, fair enough. Rune Factory Frontier. I've never played that actually, um, or heard of it. Oh, I'm so excited for Animal Crossing though. And I've got Friday off work and I've got Monday off work. So I don't know, for a couple of hours of four of those of the four, my four day weekend, I'm gonna get a lot of Animal Crossing in. just noticed this cool sort of lane we have behind the house it sort of reminds me of king of the hill where like hank and dale and bill and boomhauer all stand around just going yup this is pretty much it isn't it like a perfect recreation of it who's over here felicity trivetti and Brittany knots are out. Oh, is the old guy? He is. He's still here. Yukapinto Hekekia is still here. After all these years, he's been there since Montina was a young adult, just selling his wares. I'm going to make a lot of friends this weekend. The best kind of friends. Anthropomorphic cute little animals. I really hope this one has the arsehole villagers in it from the older ones. I never, like, I only started playing Animal Crossing with New Leaf, but I've seen screenshots and clips and stuff of the earlier games, and the animals were a lot less pleasant in the older ones. Like, in New Leaf, okay, they can be pretty mean if you haven't visited your village in a while, but some of them were just, like, I don't know, dickheads, plain and simple, in the, pre in the like, original GameCube one. I actually haven't played Pocket Camp. I only found out it existed, like, a few weeks ago. So, uh, there, there wasn't really enough time to get into it. When the, like, oh my god, no one can use the bathroom because that is where Karina chose to go asleep. Okay. 
say. Wake up, child. It is time for your training. Hey, your brother can do it. It's Thursday, but it's Monty Goth Day, isn't it? So, um, I don't think he has school. Oh, no, he has, he has class in 11 hours, but it's just nine at night. Everybody slept during the day today. Okay, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> Okay, she's learned enough stacking. Let's teach her some shapes. She's actually learning things really, really quickly. I'm kind of happy with this. No, wait, what's going on? No, actually, we should be teaching her to stack. Because shapes improve her thinking. She was learning to stack, but it... I don't even understand. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, somebody get her some food. Here, let's cook some franken beans. Uh, yeah, you have to actually cook the franken beans before you can eat them. They don't just magic away your hunger when you leave them on the kitchen floor. Like it's not a passive. Pr oh no! Get out of those drawers. Where'd you get that remote control from? Brabla's right. Okay, let's... Actually, let's just replace it. Okay, Bernice, eat your dinner. Toddler slide is best way to get movement up, is it? Okay, fair enough. Let's give that a go then. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I am excited to uh, get back to... Oh my god, we don't need the dog obstacle anymore. Oh, I used to have a slide when I was younger. Yeah, I think it was it's similar enough to these colors. I say when I was younger, like we got it when I was a baby and it was in my parents' back garden until I was like 23. And then they threw it out. I then regretted it like just a few years later when my nephew was born. <laughs> Here, it's, it's only like 2 a.m. It's perfect play outside time. Um, I was saying something else. Yeah, I can't wait to get back to Stardew Valley. I'm not having doing the most um, exciting stuff at the moment. Okay, you don't. Oh wow, this does really seem to boost movement, but um. Yeah, I'm trying to reach the bot level 100 of the Skull Cave, and I figure it takes ages to sort of tunnel down through all of that. So, wow, that was really fast. Yeah, it's taken ages to tunnel down. I mean, I can make it to like level 27 or something if I'm really, really quick. But I need, to, you know, I'm never going to make it to level 100 within one day. So I'm trying to collect like 10,000 stone to just build like 99 staircases so that I can just skip all the levels and get down, which I think is the only way, real way to do it. And I'm up to about seven and a half thousand stone now. Thanks to my clever strategy. I've discovered of um, 
Go into the first level of the mines, and if there's big rocks there, then breaking them, or if not, leaving and coming back in. <laughs> Which is a little bit cheaty, but, um, well, it's not really cheaty. I'm, not, I'm, it's a little bit exploity, I think. But, eh, I'm not breaking any rules. <laughs> It's fun because, I don't know, I, I was sure I'd played most of um, Stardew Valley, like, in general. I thought I knew it all. And I'm just discovering that I think I just barely ha knew the tip of the iceberg last time I played it. Like, I finished the community centre before and thought, oh, well, that's kind of the point of it. You know, game game's over. And no, like, <laughs> there's so much more after that. When's this new little burden coming along? 18 hours till the third trimester. How are we going to cope with this? Jack acquired the singing skill. I guess Russell was like playing keyboard. Jack is on vocals. Some sort of crazy family band thing going on. They're like the Osmonds, but um, they're not. They're the pretties. The Pretties would be a great name for a, for a band. The Pretty Family. I think that would be a really good band name. I could imagine the Pretty Family, like, charting with some sort of, like, mediocre soft rock song that just gets stuck in your head. Look, he's still dancing. Do I hear I'm walking on sunshine from somewhere? I do. So he is walking on sunshine. I didn't know that song was in the game. to save because you know we have to be careful we don't lose some progress i suppose since it's monty goth day and we have to like remember the dead we're gonna to have to take a family trip to like the park to remember the dead our dead relatives and to like fight each other and be mean all the other things as well like um okay let's let's just bring the whole family along wherever they are what are we looking for here we go. Miss Glaceon, hello, welcome. How are you? Doke. So here are the graves of our ancestors that we have to like destroy. No, we have to read the epitaph of. Oh, I guess. Hmm. I guess this one is dead. Tomax has faded. Montina. What's Tomax's epitaph? We can't... Oh yeah, now it's back. Okay, that seems to have... Well, no, we still can't, like, mourn at it. Okay, let's go mourn Montina, everybody. Even though it's going to put you all into a terrible, terrible mood. Oh my god. Even the toddlers are in on it. Oh well. You, you weren't even alive when she was. 
You never met your grandmother. Okay, has everyone had a had a had a good bit of a cry then? Oh my god, Karina loved it. Look, it made her day. Oh, because she can't be she can't air her grievances. Okay, well now that that's done, it's time for the um annual the annual brawl. Why can't we do the annual brawl? There we go. These guys can. Oh, adults can't fight with teenagers, I guess. And pregnant sims can't fight, as far as I know. So we have to find an adult to beat up. Um, no. Oh, is she just going to milk it? Yeah, you, can, you can milk that plant. Oh, here comes someone. No, he can't fight people. What's up, Drizello? Let's air our grievances to her. I don't mourn Montina. I don't get... Oh, or to your son. Okay, argue about the house rules. There you go. Oh no! Not you too, Bernice. Where did you find those pots and pans? This is a museum. They're probably artifacts. Okay, let's get out of here. There's a petition for Animal Crossing to be released early. Oh, that would be pretty handy. Disney released Frozen 2 to Disney Plus early, did they? We don't even have Disney Plus here yet. We're not getting it until the 26th. Oh, I watched an episode of a weird thing on Netflix today. Chris D, hello, welcome. They are going to miss out on quarantine-induced subscriptions. Un well, unless the quarantine is still going on. Um. Okay, Bernice is tired, so someone has to put her to bed. And I think, <laughs> oh my god, look at his face. Drizello is not in a good mood. Well, I'm not going to be in a good mood if he doesn't read her to sleep like he's supposed to. Like, you know, actually in the bed. He's doing it. He's doing it. Okay, we are go. Because I think imagination and potty are the last things she has to learn. Even then, she's nearly there with potty. I was going to say something about Disney Plus and now I just... Oh no, I was talking about Netflix. The thing I watched on Netflix. Yeah, I watched an episode of some really cool thing. Well, I say really cool. It was kind of intriguing. Um, what was it called? Aries, I think? I think it was Dutch or something. It was dubbed into English anyway. But it wasn't too noticeable that it was dubbed. Um, I mean, the lip syncing was reasonably okay. Whatever way they did it. But it was about some uh, girl who's like joining a secret society in her college. Um, it feel, felt a bit Americanized or something, which is weird. Because I think it was like a Dutch thing with Dutch actors and stuff. Um, but it was mysterious anyway. It, it intrigued me to watch the next episode. I can't even summarize what happened in it now that I think about it. I think she basically finds out about the secret society and goes to join them and they're a bit creepy and wear masks but you know it's a full series that's only episode one <laughs> a 
I'll have to give the other episodes a watch. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow's a bank holiday. The bank holiday formerly known as St. Patrick's Day. Because, <laughs> um... There will be no parades this year. So, is this baby any nearer? Third trimester in 12 hours. She should get some rest. And Drizello should get some rest as well. Just because now it's the afternoon. So, of course they should go to bed now. Because this family is on some sort of nocturnal sleep cycle lately. I think Monty Goth Day has been an okay day for everyone anyway. Oh, Russell is still awake. He's well rested. Bank holiday no different to any other day. Well, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> well, the difference for me is I have to work from home on other days. I don't have to work from home tomorrow. Let's invite Shanna over. Oh my god, who's this ghost out for a stroll in their underwear? Karina Knotts. Okay. Interesting. I guess she drowned or something. That looks like a swimsuit. Or maybe, you know, it was an unfortunately timed car accident. Let's offer a massage. Oh, I just realised we actually don't really need these oh no we needed that sorry i was going after this we don't actually need the dog feeder and stuff anymore either since garris passed but we know he's about to be reborn as our mysterious extra baby so it'll be fine here have have yourselves a monty goth day fight All the couples are doing it. I swear, um, this is exactly what... I don't know, who's a famous couple? This is what Brangelina do. They fight like this. On Monty Goth Day. Oh, and then a big hug afterwards to show that they're, uh, they're, they're really friends. Oh, let's air some grievances to her as well. Oh, we could get, end up with some really interesting sims if we bred her into the bloodline. But we're trying to be going for, like, normal, nice-looking sims. And I think we'd just end up with weirder ones. Russell's going through a phase. He's feeling rebellious. Okay. Profess your undying love. You don't think that somehow them messing around in the shower is what somehow made, like, the, their parents pregnant. That couldn't be a bug, could it? Wakey, wakey. She needs a bath as well. We should just bathe her in gravy. Then, you know, that would basically solve both problems at the same time. Here, wash, wash your sister. Just give her an old dip in whatever. Some, like, tomato soup or something. Is her chest very low? I was saying that yesterday. Yeah, I think maybe she has some, like, really, really heavy nipple piercings or something that are dragging it down with the weight. That's my theory. Because they are kind of resting just above her belly button.
Or maybe she has implants and they filled them with like liquid cement by accident. And they just sort of boom. Oh my god, she did the- did you see the legs there? This is the thing Bernice does. I think she's like secretly Mr. Fantastic or whatever. It's weird that he's called Mr. Fantastic in the Fantastic Four. Why isn't he called Mr. Elastic? When his power is about being elastic. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, yeah, being elast be having like an elastic -y body is pretty fantastic in like everyday life in the real world if you had that power. But in the Marvel world, everyone has superpowers. Like Spider-Man has more fantastic powers than Mr. Fantastic has. Like even within the Fantastic Four, the Human Torch's power is far more fantastic, I think. Or Invisible Girl's powers is far are far more fantastic. In fact, I think Mr. Fantastic actually has probably the least fantastic power of the Fantastic Four. I suppose they can't call him, like, Mr. Slightly better than a normal human. No, Mr. Fantastic relative to a normal human, but pretty useless in superhero terms. Does anyone remember the Fantastic Four cartoon that used to be on? And they didn't have the human torch in it. And I think it was because it was too violent or something, having a superhero who went on fire. So they replaced him with like a ripoff of R2-D2 from Star Wars. So just this weird little robot thing with a little dome head who followed the Fantastic Four around. Like bleepity blooping and stuff. It was very strange. We have a bin. We do. Outside. Because, um... Russell's girlfriend was on all fours, clawing through a pile of filth on the carpet, looking for snacks. So, um... <laughs> we, we, have to, we have to tidy up her mess. Can you play with this? No. No, you cannot. Boo Boo Billy suffers from more symptoms than a hypochondriac during flu season. Diagnose and treat all his illnesses. Okay. I will. Oh, here we go. We're in some serious potty training now. Oh, and look. We're going to do it. We're going to get our imagination. Once she gets the third imagination point, there we go. All she has to do is, like, use the potty a million times. And her toddlerhood is complete. I mean, we could push to get everything up to five, but I don't think it's fun to do that. Like, it's doable, but the schedule is so tight. You just have to micromanage so much. I'm not bothered. Oh my god. Go home, Shanna. I need to eat dinner. I'm starving. Oh, I had an excellent dinner today. I ordered in a burrito bowl. Which is like my new favourite food. It's like all the good of a burrito, but you don't have to deal with the wrap part, which, we'll be honest, that's the the worst part about a burrito is the wrap. That's just, you know, the container. It's much handier in a bowl to eat with a fork. A lot tidier as well. I remember once on my lunch break from work getting a burrito <laughs> and eating it in my hands on the way home and the bottom fell out of it because it wasn't wrapped tightly enough or something and just everything was all over my shirt when I got back. It was very embarrassing. <laughs> Look at that. I've finished my first glass of water and we are about, well, a little under halfway through the stream. So I am pacing myself better than usual in terms of fluids. I 
I sometimes kind of miss the old days when I'd have a bottle of Pepsi Max when I streamed. But I haven't had any kind of, like, um, fizzy, like, carbonated, sugary drinks. I mean, Pepsi Max isn't sugary. It's fake sugary. But any of those kind of things in nearly a year now. And, you know, I do feel a lot less... Um, I know I feel I feel a lot healthier for it I guess I think I drink a lot more water now I drink more water than I ever would have drank like fizzy drinks I probably drink like at least two liters a day so I'm probably a lot more well um lubricated on the inside or whatever or moistened Slimming World burrito bowls. I've never had one, but I'll have a look, I'll have a look out for them. I'm not sure if we have Iceland here. We used to have one. There used to be one in the Ilac Centre in the middle of Dublin, but um, I think it turned into a deals now. I don't know. Do other places have deals? I think it, in England, deals is Poundland because. Their cash registers, the electronic voice, says, thank you for shopping at Poundland, but the shop is called Deals. I suppose they probably changed the name over here because, you know, we uh, use the Euro. We used to have Poundland back when we used, like, Irish pounds as money, like pre-2002. I'd say that changeover was a real, like, pain in the hole for them more than it was for even other businesses oh my god shanna's broken the sink listen russell you have to you have to tidy up after her she's your guest also go to the bathroom is she like practicing her speech in the mirror we can't repair the sink while she's there can we oh we can oh nope we can't just replace it. It's a pretty cheap sink. <clears throat> we can upgrade. Oh, we can make it sturdier. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Drizello, wake up. He's taking a leave of absence from the vet clinic to raise his daughter, so he might as well make himself useful at home as well and fix the sink. Did he do that? <clears throat> Can we ask her to leave? Okay, she's done. Oh, that's pretty cool. Burritos everywhere. Could Texas be the land of my dreams? <laughs> probably not, but uh, burrito-wise, probably yes. Oh, I love Mexican food. And in, um... I was in America before. Like, I was in uh, San Francisco in a Mexican restaurant. It was a good few years ago. And they just... I don't know. They do Mexican food so much better over there than they do here. Like, the restaurants are proper sit-down-y places where you can order stuff. You know, you don't have to queue up at the counter. They give you free nachos beforehand. Oh, it's amazing. I suppose, actually, no, they have places like that in England as well. Because I know whenever I'm in Manchester visiting my sister, I like to get, I like to have at least one meal at, um, what's the name of the place? Chiquitos? It's like a chain, and... I think my sister and her fiancé think I'm a lunatic that Chiquitos in Manchester is one of my regular stop-off points on my trips over there. <laughs> but I always have to go to Chiquitos. Because they do a dessert called Mexican Mess. And it's like an eaten mess, except it's in an edible bowl made of tortilla. So you have ice cream and yogurt and fruit and meringue just in a tortilla bowl and you, f you eat your dessert then you eat the bowl afterwards it's amazing 
more food should come in edible bowls. Actually, when I was in San Francisco as well, they do chili in like edible bread bowls there. That was very good as well. The food portions were also huge as well. I think that's like an American thing. They have, um, they serve food in like massive amounts, which I love. Because you can pretend you're just, you're like, oh no, I'm, I'm not eating too much today. I'm just sticking to my three meals. But your three meals are like, I don't know, cake for breakfast. And then like two 2,000 calorie burgers or something. <laughs> oh. It is nice though. They do tortilla soup in tortilla bowls. Oh, that sounds amazing. No, I tried to make my own burrito bowl earlier in the week. I went out and bought all the ingredients. Why are you asleep in your parents' bed? You're a bit old for that. Go into your own bed. I tried to make my own burrito bowl during the week, and it turned out pretty well. Except that, well, I, you know, I mismeasured my refried beans and probably put in like twice as much as I should have. So it ended up to being mostly a bean bowl. Like the bean to everything else ratio was insane like um it was kind of like a pile of refried beans with bits of rice and guacamole and chicken in it <laughs> probably very high in fiber though very healthy don't have to nap on top of the covers. Look, your son is gone. You can actually get into bed. And you too, I suppose. Um, when is Bernice going to... Oh no, she's about to wake up now. Oh, she's back on like normal schedule. This is about normal toddler wake up time. Like 7am. I think that's acceptable. Oh no, you've got work. Yeah, you can go to work. Yeah, I think we've, we've somehow worked our way back onto like a... A daytime schedule of sleep. Or sorry, a nighttime schedule of sleep. A daytime schedule of being awake. Which is a hard thing to maintain in The Sims. Um, do you know what would be really good in this game? Just thinking. Like spitballing ideas for The Sims 5. What they could have. Would be a way to set a daily routine for your Sim. It's kind of similar to RimWorld, where you can tell a colonist to, like, sleep between certain hours and be awake between certain hours. Like, if you could assign a bedtime to your sims, and then they would just kind of go to bed at that time, drop what they're doing and go to bed automatically, so you didn't have to kind of keep an eye on them. And you could keep their routine kind of regular that way. I think that would be pretty handy. And, like, you could set a dinner time where, you know, one of your sims would make dinner. Maybe, maybe they'd decide among themselves. Maybe you pick who does it. I don't know. Yeah, if you could schedule someone to do dinner on particular days. And just not have to worry about, you know, remembering to do it. Here, get your dad to help you get that last potty point. There we go. Oh no, more bats. A chores list. Yeah, something like that. I think that could help. But you'd need to be able to set the time on it as well. Like to just say, okay, make dinner at six o'clock for four people. And the other sims will know that's dinner time. So they will wait at the table for their dinner and they'll all eat together. Oh, I'm getting ideas. I'm going to... I, I, I should make this game. This pretend sims that I'm coming up with.
But then I, I'd never get it finished. I always do this. I come up with these ideas. A couple of times I've come up with the idea, I'll make my own Sims game. And it'll be even better than the original. And then, you know, <laughs> you sit down and figure out exactly what's involved in that. And then... You just... I don't know. There's nowhere really to go. <laughs> like, it, like it, it's just overwhelming coming up with what to do next. Paralyzed. Yeah, I've seen it a bit. I think people might be putting a little bit too much hope into it. Just based on my own experience from think you know as i was saying thinking i'm going to make my own sims game um <clears throat> like as far with paralives i think what we've seen mostly is like the building and um furniture and all that which it they look like pretty powerful building tools but i think the real challenge of it sort of comes into making your actual sims that will live in the world and you know the ai between and animations and stuff between how they'll interact with the world it yeah it looks it looks like an interesting game i'd definitely give it a try um like i'm intrigued to see where it goes but I don't want to get my hopes up about it because, you know, if I get too hyped about a game before it comes out, then I'll be inevitably disappointed with it. I think that's what happened with Spore when it was coming out. And I love Spore. I keep going back to it now. Like, I really do like Spore as a game. But I was a bit disappointed when it came out. It didn't live up to the full potential of the original tech demo. And... I think um, Oblivion is another one, the Elder Scrolls game. Like, I mean, Oblivion's a good game. I don't think it's as good as Morrowind, the one before it. But, you know, it's fine. But, uh, yeah, I just never... Um... Well, I suppose I read all the hype about it and thought it would be so amazing when it came out. Because they really sort of hyped the... AI for the characters in Oblivion and stuff, the radiant AI they'd have and that, you know, people will go on about with their lives like real people and their real stories will happen as you watch and stuff. And it didn't really have any of that in the end. You know, you got, it was sort of the beginning of those sort of weird, um, weird Bethesda NPCs that everyone makes fun of, who just sort of repeat catchphrases and wander about really weird. <laughs> a Skyrim Stardew Valley Harvest Moon combo that looks like Breath of the Wild. Yeah. That would be the dream. I don't know. I'm kind of looking forward to whatever they do with the next Elder Scrolls game. Because they're always such fun games. But I'm also a little worried about it. Because... Bethesda haven't really been on their A game the last couple of years. Like, um, oh, hang on, it's happening again. Bernice's legs. Why does she do this? The other toddlers didn't do this. I don't understand what's going on. It's just some sort of a like animation she has, and look, her cheeks bulge out as well. Oh, it's really spooky. Oh, maybe her cheeks are normally like that. No, they bulge out even more when she does that. It's very weird. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, like Fallout 4 was okay, I guess, but it was very light on the role-playing side of it. It was just really more of an open-world shooter. And then they made Fallout 76, which, you know, I don't think I have to say much about that. Nobody likes Fallout 76. So, I'm kind of worried they've forgotten how to make a good game. But if they can come up with, like, a really in-depth role-playing Elder Scrolls game for Elder Scrolls 6, I would be so happy. Like, with lots of different skills, and maybe, you know, a lot of non-combat stuff. That, you know, a lot of effort put into the non-combat stuff. Like Lady Smiten said, like... 
st the Stardew Valley type stuff, like maybe growing vegetables or something, or, you know, building a house or whatever, or even just your interactions with the NPCs and everything. I think the death, ne death knell for the NPCs in Bethesda games was voice acting. Because in Morrowind, they didn't voice all the NPC lines, but it meant that, you know, they could have them speak more and give, they gave them sort of more detailed uh, things to say. Whereas if you have to pay voice actors and you're paying them by the line, you're going to want to cut down on your dialogue options or else it's going to get very expensive. Who's that? Addison Alvarado. Oh yeah. Isn't he? Wait. Addison Alvarado? Our old pal? Oh, let's go talk about the rain. Drizello became good friends with Russell. Rune Factory 5, eh? It's a Harvest Moon fantasy RPG with dungeon crawling, farming, befriending villagers, marriage candidates, and instead of animals, you farm monsters in dungeons. Oh, that sounds pretty fun. Yeah, that sounds like it could be good. Do you know what would be amazing? I think this will be what will make like RPGs great again is if they when we come up with like computer generated voices that sound real like if they could have computers speak all the lines for like an Elder Scrolls game they could go back to having the really complicated dialogue of before of like pre of like Morrowind and before before it but they wouldn't have to pay people to voice it. So it would just be a matter of typing it and letting the program kind of synthesize it. And I think that would sort of, you know, be the start of, um, of making, like, what I would say, the ultimate Elder Scrolls game. Have any of you played AI Dungeon? It's like a free game. It's like you can play it in your in a web browser or on your phone or whatever. But it's like a bot basically that acts as like a dungeon master and it tells you a story and you basically tell it what you do and the whole story plays out. And it just it's quite clever. Like it's better than I thought it would be. But it's still kind of completely insane and weird. Like I was playing it um, a few days ago. And I did um, some story where I was a knight. And basically to summarise the story that played out. With this sort of AI dungeon master. I was a knight fighting a dragon. And I chopped its head off. But then realised I'd fallen on my knife and was injured. So I used the dragon's head to burn the wound shut and then went back to see the king to tell him that I'd won. But when I went to the throne room, there was a man there who told me the king was gone. And I kept asking him where the king was and trying to tell me who he was and he wouldn't tell me. So I killed him. And then they made me the king. And then um, I went on a vengeance quest around the land to find the person who killed the king. And in the end, it turned out a little girl did it. And then I think I killed her and lived happily ever after. But that story was kind of just generated by AI. Well, with my interaction. But it was surprisingly coherent. A little bit weird. Kind of dreamlike or something, like dream logic. Oh god, she's very, very tired. Here, go to bed. No, in the actual bed, not on the wet pavement outside. Why didn't she come into the house? It kind of reminded me of like, um, 
Series 12 Doctor Who, that kind of weird, dreamy quality. I think that's more to do with the soundtrack than the episodes themselves. But, um... Yeah, you know the guy... Who is it? What's the composer's name now? Um, Seagun Akinola, who does the Doctor Who music now. He, um... Does this... I don't know, he... Met, the music is all weird and dreamy since he took over. And I think it's very good. Like, I liked Murray Gold's music when he did it. But I think... You know, they found a good replacement as well, like a worthy successor. Though, um... Yeah, I'm not sure they'll find... They've, uh... I'm not sure they'll ever find a writer as dedicated to it as Stephen Moffat, though. He was like... I mean, I know some people have trouble with some with some of his story arcs or whatever, but I think, like, having watched an awful lot of Doctor Who, I think it would be between him and Robert Holmes being, like, the best writers that the show has had. I wonder if Robert Holmes still alive. Would he ever come back and do more of it? Because he used to write for the classic series. He's probably dead now. Oh yeah, he died in 1986. So... <laughs> I, I guess they'd probably have some trouble bringing him back. But he did very, he did very good writing in like the classic series. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he died before I was born. <laughs> oh. But maybe, like our dog, um, Garrus, he... His spirit became trapped in a pregnant woman nearby and he has been reborn and will someday take the helm of Doctor Who again. And herald in another golden age of sci-fi. Oh, well, he was only 60 when he died, so, you know, it's conceivable he could have been alive. I feel less silly now. watching some old timey song and dance show woman with a lot of cats it's like um the old it's the old version of cats the musical before cat costumes were invented when they actually had to do it with real trained cats it was a lot more impressive in those days oh we're out of food again um here your little sister needs dinner. Make some. See, she's waiting. She's cheering. She really likes this. She likes a good good grilled cheese sandwich. What child doesn't? What child doesn't ask for grilled cheese for Christmas every year? So, 
so only three days until she grows up and it's nearly midnight so two days really we're going to have a child Bernice probably within this stream I think we've we're just blazing through all her toddler years unfortunately we're going to have a baby in the house immediately after oh, she's gonna to have to like share a room with her brothers unless we can move one of them out we can't really they're not going to be an adult on time um god television Dr here drizello this is broken please repair oh no she's naked um why don't you go in and be shape oh oh the new garris is coming god she's huge i bet it's twins Let's send her to have a baby. We'll send her alone this time. There's no point in taking um, Drizello away from fixing the TV. What time am I streaming to? Um, probably close enough to 9 o'clock. Like, at least another half hour, I would say. If not 45 minutes. So I think three. Oh no! Oh crap! I thought send alone meant she went by herself. I didn't know it meant we didn't follow. Ah, oh, it's fine. Okay, so the new Garris is here. Oh no! It's twins. Garris's soul has been split into Garris and Gurlis. Oh. Oh. So I said I was streaming till nine, did I? Oh, God. Twin. <laughs> Ireland has developed a testing kit which confirms coronavirus in 15 minutes. Oh, wow. That's pretty handy. I saw as well that they're converting um, Croke Park, like the country's, I think it's the country's biggest stadium, into a drive through coronavirus testing centre. Which just, I don't know, seems, it seems like something out of The Simpsons, but apparently it's got to be a thing, which is interesting. Okay, so... Where are the babies? There's one of them. There's Gurlis. Where's... G and Garrus is there. Oh my god. This house is too small. But we... We can't lose our tiny house bonus by making it bigger. Oh, where are we going to put them? Okay. Here's what we're going to have to do. <laughs> We're gonna have to sell these toys. Like, sorry, Bernice, you're too big for the nursery now. It is funny that they did invent this one day after the pubs were closed. <laughs> I suppose it shows what what you can do when you put your mind to it. She's still naked playing with her blocks. Oh no, both babies are upset. Is it the thunder? Um, we're going to have to, like, two-team them. Tag-team them. Can you do anything? Oh, you can talk. Toddlers can talk to babies now. They weren't able to do that before, were they? So... 
We have three candidates to be the heir of the family now. And do you know what the crazy thing is? We need um, Russell to get married and have kids as well. We probably also need him to move into this lot. No, Jack will move into that lot. Russell can live somewhere outside the neighbourhood. We don't really care. Um, we can't visit him though if he does. Oh, this is a pain. Look who's not the center of attention anymore. You're not the baby, no. <laughs> There's like three actual babies in the house. You can't be our baby if you're like the old, the joint oldest of five kids. God, Drizello's parenting skills are going to be off the charts. Maybe one of these babies should be our heir. Because Drizello had his parenting skill at the highest when they were born. I'm glad you're happy it's twins. I'm just like... Oh, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. The twins. This is going to be awful. In this house, they're raising five kids in a three-bedroom bungalow. How are they going to do it? Bulpacula, hello. Yeah, two babies means two toddlers. Cain and Abel situation. Good idea. I think if any... Go well, oh... Where did Jack go? I think Jack and Russell are the Cain and Abel of this family. I think Jack is the evil one. Russell seems like a good boy. He's just a little weird. Jack is a slobby kleptomaniac. He's a muser. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, here. Okay. Here, Bernice, go talk to your sister. Do you know what I've realised? Like, Drizello was pretty much at the end, of, well, he's halfway through his adulthood. He's going to die before these kids reach adulthood. They're going to have to be raised by their sister. For at least part of their life. They'd help each other out with their communication skills. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and the teens will be gone, I suppose. I suppose. God. This generation will never end. <laughs> oh. Well, what was his aspiration? Big happy family? We've kind of got that anyway. <laughs> We've lived up to this generation's goals. She better not be pregnant again. Can we test? No, she can't do a test again. But, um... Okay, someone needs to make dinner. Because apparently it's all gone again. This is the problem with having such a huge family. Oh, Jack is taking care of it. That's good. Here, feed both babies while you're here. No? No food? Okay. Suit yourself. Who's crying? Okay, they both shut up. <laughs> so Bernice will be a child in two days. Still. God, it's it's still that same night? Oh my god, I thought that was like yesterday. here go potty does she have her potty skill yet no not quite okay let's get it up to level three and she can go to bed oh 
Oh, this is turning into a hundred baby challenge. And not at my suggestion. Make sure Jack and Russell knock up some ladies before moving out. Yeah, that's what we have to do that actually. Um, Russell is going to have to get his girlfriend pregnant. And then they can get married. And well, Jack is going to live in this trailer. I guess Russell can live somewhere else. We'll, we'll find him another house in like another part of town or something. There's been two sets of twins, yes. God, look at this family tree. <laughs> Oh. These two just laughing from beyond the grave. Oh, Tomax is still here, even though his grave wasn't very interactive. Even though he's kind of faded on, he hasn't been culled from the family tree. That's kind of good. We'll still see him there for a while, I guess. Just always permanently eating. Everyone in the house is eating. You know what? Uh, Drizello can never go back to work. He just has to stay here and care for the babies. All the time. His entire life. You know what? He's going to work today. You know, forget the, forget the toddler. He's going to work. He's doing it. We're going back to the vet clinic. We need some semblance of normality in this Sims house. <laughs> okay, let's open up. Oh no. Oh, the vomit is still here. Well, our employee will clean that up, hopefully. Let's get started. Um, no, she's just standing in the garden, I guess. Did I see someone come in and register as a customer? Greet warmly. Oh my god, what a really weird looking dog. You see some strange looking pets in this game. Okay, gonna have to do a skin inspection. And a chart check, I think. If I move one of the twins and the kids to another neighbour, will Drizello be able to get his grandchild related aspiration? Um, he has to be friends with his grandchildren. So as long as he can invite them over, then he's all, he's all right. Maybe they can go live in that trailer. Oh no, oh no. It's... Okay, no, she's not outside crying at the grave. So better than our last employee anyway. Uh, okay, we have to apparently do surgery. Okay, yeah, she's in here mopping. Gina is a better veterinary assistant. The last one must have just been gloomy or something. She was obsessed with that pet cemetery. Right, who's next? You? Bring your animal in. Your weird cat raccoon. Um. I think this one's just healthy. Oh no, swamp mouth. That's why I'm not a vet, I guess. Yes, I'll treat your cat. Why isn't she cleaning anymore? There's still vomit on the floor. Uh -huh. 
Oh no, there's a vomity dog. Oh, and we have to do surgery. Leaving the vomity dog loose in the clinic. Making a mess. We turned the dog into a, the cat into a small dog shaped hedge. Okay. She must be the one with the vomity dog. She was here already with another animal. Yeah, look. Oh no, wrong dog. Oh crap. And our surgery machine is broken. Um, This isn't good. Okay, no, no new customers. Where is our veterinary assistant? Oh no, another surgery. She, oh my God. Hang on, we're gonna do this surgery and then we're gonna fire Gina. I'm going to go criticize her. Oh god. We still managed to treat the animal with the broken surgery machine. Okay. I'm going to close for today. Our rating went down. But we do need to block off this pet cemetery a little bit. What's this? Find out, find an employee with the neat trait. Oh, that would be pretty handy. Oh, okay. See you, Lady Smiten. Oh, and hello, Ray. Welcome. Right, how do we keep people away from the pet cemetery? Can we just... put in a big fence like this. Some sort of like safety fence. I want to make it really obvious. Like, yeah, this is good. Like, do not visit Pet Cemetery ever. Can we get like a gate for that and lock it? They have like barbed wire on top of it and everything. Lock door for everyone but Drizello. Only Drizello has the key to the Pet Cemetery now. Nobody else may visit the pet cemetery. I better get him to repair this machine. Did I see? Oh, we've got four four ninety. We can nearly get the vet coat. Oh, we already got well managed. Okay. Well, that was probably even more stressful than the toddlers are going to be. So that has... That that was the palate cleanser before sending them back home. To his house of horrors. Who's this? Marie Norman and Jared Kahana, Kahana Wibley. all here. Okay, someone has to shower or bathe Bernice. And I think her mother should do it. Well, Bernice, when are you growing up? Still two days away. Oh my god. 
Yeah, we're going to play until Bernice grows up. That's the point we're going to finish tonight. I think. Oh. I miss when she was our definite heir and, you know, we didn't have to worry about future generations. <laughs> Simpler times. It's weird how when they take a serving, the plate shrinks. It doesn't make sense. Unless they have, like, shrinky plates in America or something. They don't have them here anyway. When you take a serving of a meal, the portion size on the plate shrinks, not the plate itself. What are the Wonder Twins up to? Not much. Okay. At least we've got a clear way out for Russell anyway. Once um, once he's older and he can just like marry Shanna. And Jack can go live in this caravan. And I don't know where Russell will live. You know what we could do? Oh, here's an idea. Maybe we can convert the vet clinic into a... Like, Russell could be a vet. Maybe we could convert the vet clinic into, like, a house. No, we can't. We need a vet clinic. No, that wouldn't work. And we we can't really build more houses because um, all the lots here have, have, like, a purpose in this challenge. Stop teasing the baby and just stop him. Stop her from crying. Please. This one, too. I know he's about to begin. I wonder if there is there anyone out there who actually did name their child after their dead dog. Or once you've used a name for a dog, does the it become forever off limits to use again for your children. I think it kind of does socially, doesn't it? It's weird. Yeah, because like thinking about it. When I was younger, we had a dog called Holly. And I think Holly's a nice name, but I could never have a child called Holly after I've had a dog called Holly. It would just be weird. And I didn't even name the dog, so... Like, it was just... It's like the previous owner took that choice from me. I also had a dog called Bobby, so I could never have a... I could never have a child even called Robert, because... That could turn into a Bobby when he's older. And then, you know, when people are talking about him, you wouldn't know if they were talking about, like, the child or the dog. It would just get confusing. Okay, are we down to one day? Oh, God. One day until Bernice grows up. She's gonna. We're going to grow her up at midnight tonight. And her brother's are nearly growing up as well. Is she using the potty on her own? No, she's going into the toy box. That toy box belongs to your brother and sister now, Bernice. It's not yours anymore. Stop telling jokes to the kid. She's pooed herself. Just change her nappy and feed her. I'm just noticed. Remember before when we had that... Um, weird issue um it was back when we had the triplets in the first legacy challenge where only one of them cried and the other two didn't or was it with twins in that challenge i've noticed that girlis is doing all the crying and garris is just pretty content do you think that's happened again these really are weird mysterious babies The Twins of Destiny. Anyone remember that cartoon? 
Twins of Destiny. It was about a Chinese boy and I think an English girl who were somehow twins. And they had to travel the world and save it from something. I don't know, I think it was like a French cartoon. I just remember the theme song was like dooby 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 doo dooby 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 doo dooby 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 doo the twins of destiny are something oh I'm gonna have to YouTube that one I remember it was awful like I didn't like it but it was always on it was on TCC Now use the toilet. Look, we'll, we'll fix the babies after. Oh no, Garrus cried there. Okay, so they... Garrus can no pain. very rude and checking my phone as I play. Okay, nothing new. Now I thought I had a new message. I did not. It was an old message. Everyone's in a good mood. Oh, let, let's go open the vet clinic again. One more day. It's a good way to avoid the babies for a day. <laughs> and to be stressed about something else. Oh my god, look at all this vomit. Just look at it. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to open. We're going to disallow new customers until the whole place is clean. And, and, Drizello, you don't have to clean. You can come in here and do something fun. You can... Household. Ooh. You can buy a vet clinic. You can buy a second one? You can play some Blick Block. Because it is up to... What's-her-face to clean the place. Where is she? We have an employee, right? Yeah, Gina Munch. Where is where's Gina Munch gone? Uh yeah, go to work. She hasn't turned up. Oh here she comes. Finally, just crawling in at 10 to 8 in the morning. Ahem. Uh, uh, excuse me, Gina Munch. What are you doing? Things are okay. Listen. Gina Munch. Get to work. Now, yeah, only Drizello may use the toilet now because Gina keeps going in there to talk to the mirror. There we go. Okay, she's she's cleaning the floor now. Finally, let's finally we can let some customers in. Drizello's getting hungry now. Why don't we get him to have some instant noodles or something? Oh, actually, we have a, we have we have a customer out here. It's that woman again, in the yellow dress with the weird hair. Where'd she go? I saw her. Oh, there she is. She's come in to have some noodles. She's getting very familiar. Logan Cahoon. That wasn't her surname before, was it? Did she get married? 
Okay, well, let's greet her warmly. Okay, yeah, we'll look after your cat for you. I have found the motivator to get Sims to do, <laughs> get employees to do their work, and it's to lock them out of the bathroom until they do it. Oh, I'd be the best manager ever. Look how clean this place is. So yeah, we're going to take the te take temperature, and that should solve Winterfest fever. Well, that's fine. We can treat that. Yes, we will treat Bandito. What's wrong with this guy? He's not happy with how the place looks. I think he's being too fussy. He must be a niche sim. <sighs> Bandito, if you don't get onto this table, then I am going to put you to sleep. This cat is too confident. Okay, check chart. Someone vomited in here. Was it you, Bandito? It's surgery. Oh, it's surgery. Oh, I hate surgery. Okay. Great. There you go. Your cat is cured. Um... Now, let's take care of this grumpy old man with his vomity dog. Is the vomity dog his? It is! Right, you get in here. Stop vomiting on my floor. Looks very sleepy. Why do they do that? It's a genuine question I have for Maxis. Why do the dogs do that? And why are you not addressing it with a patch? How's Bernice doing while all this is going on? Oh, she's fine. She's actually not starving to death like mo most toddlers do when left unattended. Okay. Good. I thought that was going to be another surgery. I was going to scream. Okay, that's enough customers for today. Uh, oh, God. Okay, you need to pee. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Where's she going? Can't leave. It's your turn. Oh, she's gone. Okay, well, it's your turn then. It's your lucky day. Come on, get your weird little dog up here. It's like a tiny greyhound. He's got gold poop. Why are you bringing him in to get cured then? That's what I don't understand. Why does Humor and Hijinks Festival have a weird Asian theme to it? Why is he singing? Off key as well. Okay, there we go. We made practically no profits today, but the place is clean and that's what's important. Oh. Well, and we've made it home for Bernice's birthday. Bernice's burn day. Oh, and some bills. Can we pay them from the vet clinic? No. Oh my god, how does the vets have so little money now? There used to be a lot of money there. Now we're just sort of vaguely almost breaking even. I think we're making a slight loss. Oh, Garrus was upset. 
Yeah, we definitely don't have the weird crying bug again. I am out of water. Oh, Bernice reached communication level 5. She's actually going out of her way to try and impress us and become the new heir. But she's got the ugly cheeks. I don't think she's going to be now that we've got, you know, other kids as an option. Sorry, I'm just adjusting my cushion. That's better. Needed more neck support. Video gaming level 2. Oh, well, well done, Jack. Now, how about you change this pooey baby? Oh, now Garrus is the one always getting upset. The tables have turned. And tables shouldn't turn. They should be stationary on four legs. Unless they're one of those turning tables for, you know, spinning records on. Do you think that's what the tables have turned is talking about? Or is it talking about the turntables that trains go on to make them turn around? I used to think they were the coolest thing in the world back when I was little. Because, you know, they were in Thomas the Tank Engine. Clearly the, like, coolest and most badass TV show of all time. When you're five. <laughs> Okay, actually, let's make this birthday cake. Chocolate cake for Bernice. It's a shame Bernice wasn't a twin, because we could have called them Bernice and Bernephew. Oh my god. Here, we need two adults awake. Teenager will do. Oh god, double toddler emergency. No, I don't think she's pregnant again. She look she looks quite big, but I think she might have just been eating a lot. Um Where's oh, we can't add birthday candles for some reason? Okay, it's time. It's zero days until Bernice grows up. It's time to grow her up. Wakey, wakey. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Boom, she's grown up and her trait is good. Okay, and let's see random number between one and four. From random.org. Number four. So she is social. I wish, I really wish there was more aspirations for children. There we go. Oh, actually, she doesn't look too weird. She actually looks okay. I think it's just the hair is nice. But yeah, she's grown up okay, I guess. Someone sent her a present. Colette sent her a, Colette is an elder now. Oh my God. Anyway, I guess I'll save and finish there for th tonight. Um, Yeah, we've got... Wow, quite a lot happened tonight. Bit of a disaster. But um, yeah, if, you, if you've enjoyed it and you want to watch it again, check out my YouTube channel, NinjaConnor86. If you're already watching on YouTube and want to catch it live next time, check out twitch.tv slash NinjaConnor. Um, I'll be back next Sunday. Until then, goodbye.